Hello and welcome to our first video for our prenatal series. I'm 10 weeks pregnant, so you can join us at 10 weeks. If you're wondering what should I be doing the first 10 weeks, you can do normal Pilates and you can um, look up my other videos and you can do any of those, it's perfectly safe. I haven't been doing Pilates for the last 10 weeks or more like the last six weeks because I've had such extreme nausea, which I'm sure many of you share. So um, I've just been resting. So. This first video will also be for me to regain the strength and to, to rebuild the strength across the program. So thank you for joining us. Please do share where you're from, how far along you are, if it's your first, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to create a community around this too. At the start of each session, I'm going to read a mantra and at the end of each session, I'll read a manifestation. Just something we can hold during the week and focus on. So our mantra for today, and these are thanks to Roxy Nafusi, I am more powerful than my fears. I am more powerful than my fears. So if you have any fears, um, it doesn't have to be connected to the pregnancy, but if it is, whether it's a pregnancy, you're giving birth or a new baby, you are more powerful than your fears. But it could be something else in your life. So think about your inner power. Right, let's get to it. I'd like us to start with the shoulder bridge. Now, this is one of my favorites. It's also very powerful for when you're pregnant and, and also in um, postnatal recovery. So we'll be doing a lot of it, but what I'll do is I'll give a variation each week to stop it becoming boring. I'd like you to be in line supine, so lying on your back. I'd like your feet hip width apart, your knees hip width apart. Your feet can be slightly closer to the bottom than, for example, the 100 and some other, other things, just to give that extra support. And now lying on your back, I'd like you to take a deep inhale, hands by your side. I'd now like you to imagine a gold thread pulling up out of your head, pulling you nice and tall towards the back of the room. Another deep inhale in through your nose, out through the mouth. Now I'd like you to bring your hands to your pelvis. And I'd like you to rock your pelvis back and forward. And imagine a bowl of water sloshing around in there. Hopefully you don't need the loo. And slowly you're going to bring that bowl of water to a standstill. And this is finding your neutral spine. So you shouldn't have flat back. You shouldn't have no space under your back nor should you have a big arched back. So you find your neutral spine and there should be a little, you know, letter gap under your back there. Now I'd like you to put your hands on your waist and we're just going to engage the core. It's perfectly safe to engage the core even while you're pregnant. So I'd like you to engage your deep core muscles, the transverse abdominal muscles. So just imagine a belt around your waist and it's tightening and tightening and tightening. You don't have to go to sort of 100% that 10th knot while you're pregnant, but just engage that core. This will help you throughout the pregnancy as well. And so you engage that core and then you let it go to about 20 to 30%. And that's where we're gonna hold it throughout. And now let's like draw your attention to your pelvic floor. And to engage your pelvic floor, I'd like you to just squeeze, starting at the back and then draw it forward. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Imagine you're holding in a wee now and you're holding everything as tight as possible. And imagine you're drawing up a piece of spaghetti. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Take it to 100, squeeze as much as you can and then relax it down to about 20 to 30%. So you're engaging your pelvic floor throughout this exercise and throughout all our exercises. Okay, another deep breath here. Now I'd like you to put your hands on your rib cage and this next inhale in through the nose. I'd like you to imagine your rib cage is expanding like an umbrella and then gently closing again. And this is deep lateral thoracic breathing. We're going to do this throughout all the exercises. Okay, good job. Right, we're ready. We're going to inhale and on our exhale, we're simply going to tilt the pelvis, nothing more, just a pelvis tilt. So inhale now, exhale, tilt that pelvis, inhale, reset. And again, and this time we're gonna follow through. Inhale here, exhale, tilt that pelvis, and then continue up one vertebrae at a time 
up into that lovely diagonal. So you see this diagonal here. Now, if you're a beginner, I'd like you to take a breath here. In fact, everyone take a breath here. And we can all come back down one vertebrae at a time. I'm gonna go again, so inhale. Exhale, tilt that pelvis first and then one vertebrae at a time, come back up. If you're a beginner, I'd like you to continue with this. So take an inhale, return down, inhale, and on the exhale, you tilt the pelvis first and then come back up. If you've done this before, you may stay up for a moment and we're simply gonna do some heel lifts. So we're gonna go one heel lift and back down again. It's a slow and controlled movement. This is not with speed. So if you're a beginner, you're going up and down very slowly, very controlled, one vertebrae at a time. If you're comfortable to stay up for a few heel raises, then please do. And this is all we're going to do for the shoulder bridge for this exercise. Next week, we will do um, some leg lifts as well. You should be able to feel it. You can, you know, this root is a fantastic exercise because it strengthens the hamstrings, it strengthens the glutes, strengthens the core. So all the muscles that you need to be strong to carry your baby, to deliver your baby, this, and then to recover from delivery, shoulder bridge is just so good. And it's a great one, particularly in our postnatal program. We'll be doing this with some deep pelvic floor exercises and it really helps to strengthen that pelvic floor while also taking some pressure off that pelvic floor to allow you to, to really strengthen without having that sort of counter pressure. Deep breathing. You know, I can feel it in that heel lift. I can feel it challenging the hamstrings and challenging the glutes. So if you're, if you're concentrating and you're focused, you're doing it nice and slowly and keeping those hips raised, you'll be able to feel that. We're just going to do a few more. And if you want, I know we're, we're engaging the pelvic floor to about 20 to 30%. If you want, you can draw it up to that sort of 60% just for those last few heel raises. One more each side. And if you're at the beginner, you're coming up and down, you can return to the mat now. Okay, well done. And so slowly, one vertebrae at a time, coming down, close with your pelvic tilt down. And we're just going to do a full body stretch here. Full body stretch, oh, it's a lovely release really stretch. I love the full body stretch. That feels really nice. Okay, good job. We're now going to do the 100. So return to lying supine, check your setup. As we go into the 100, we raise both legs into tabletop. Now, if you're a beginner, you just do one leg at a time and I'll take you through that. But if you are going both legs into tabletop, we're going to do something that's called imprint, where you think ribs to hips and you just give that extra protection to your core and to your back. It protects your back, it protects your core. You use your core to, to do it. So we'll, we'll go through that at the time, but let's um, start with our setup. So deep inhale here. <sighs> exhale. Another inhale. And now on the exhale, we're going to bring our first leg into tabletop. And we're gonna create a 90 degree angle behind the knee and a 90 degree angle with the hip and the thigh. I'd like you to imagine a champagne glass on your shin. So you don't, oh, you can see mine was a little bit far forward and so I've just strained it up a little bit. So just, just check yourself as well. Is your shin straight? Could you have a champagne glass or a you know, no secco glass on your shin right now? Okay, now if you're a beginner, you're simply going to then bring that back down Take an inhale, and on your exhale, bring the next leg into tabletop. And you're going to continue with that throughout this program. But if you feel comfortable with the first leg in tabletop, we're gonna imprint, so think ribs to hips, protecting that lower back. 
bringing the second leg into tabletop. So we've got these right angles here, the right angles behind the knees, and two champagne glasses on the shins. Take a nice deep inhale here. And you may stay in this position if you like, but if you'd like to progress further, on the next exhale, we're going to raise our head and shoulders. So inhale, exhale, lift your head and shoulders off the ground, and your hands are just hovering above the mat. And then we're gonna start bouncing our hands. You're gonna be breathing throughout. Engage your core to that 20 to 30%. Engage your pelvic floor to that 20 to 30% and deep lateral thoracic breathing. It can be difficult for me to do the deep lateral thoracic breathing when I'm talking, but I hope you're doing lovely deep breathing. Now you can just imagine little balls under your hands and you're just bouncing these little balls. You want to concentrate here, keep your legs in tabletop, don't let those champagne glasses fall. Nice deep breathing. Now do think about and focus on the movement, but if you want to have another thought, it can be on our mantra, so you're more powerful than your fears. So if there's anything you're uncertain about or nervous about, I want you to focus on your inner power. Now, if you'd like to, when you're ready, like to bring your hands to a still and then slowly come back down onto the mat with your head and shoulders, and then one leg at a time, we're just gonna float it back down to the mat. Wonderful, and another full body stretch here. We'll do the 100 um, several, several times over the program. You can advance it to a leg, to incorporate a leg stretch as well, which is very nice. Wonderful. Okay, I'd now like us to go onto our side and we're going to do a bit of a side kick here. So I'd like you to bring one arm, your underneath the arm, down flat with palm flat on the floor and then you can rest your head on your forearm. And then with your body, I'd like your hips stacked, your knees stacked and your ankles stacked and this top arm is your supporting arm. So put it out in front of you like this. We're going to inhale here. And our exhale, simply lift the top leg above your bottom leg and then float it back down again. And the next inhale, exhale, lift, and this time sweep it out in front of you and then draw it back and then float it back down again. Inhale. Float it back down again. So with your own breath now, so I'm going out good toes, also known as plantar flexi, and then I'm drawing home dorsi flexi. So out pointy toes, plantar flexi, drawing home dorsi flexi, flex toes, coming down again. So if you ever did ballet, that's good toes out, naughty toes home. So imagine you've gone out on the town with all the good intentions in the world, but then your naughty toes have to take you home at the end of the night. Nice breathing here. Engage your core to that 20 to 30%. Engage your pelvic floor to that 20 to 30%. Sweep it out and draw it home. Now it's a very good exercise for, for all sorts. It's for your legs, um, very nice, um, for your core. But I also really like it for the mobility in the ankle. If you've got any tightness in your ankle and your tendons, and this might be true if you were once a runner, or maybe you're still a runner, um, doing this flexing can be really beneficial. And you might actually feel a bit of tension. I do, I used to run, and I do have slight tension in my tendons. And I feel when I haven't been doing Pilates, like recently, it really tightens up. And then when I do Pilates for a couple of weeks, it feels so much better. So I'm looking forward to um, experiencing that relief in the next couple of weeks because I can feel that tension in my ankle but that shows it's a really nice mobility movement for it. Okay, 
let's make this the last one. That's really nice. Well done. Okay. If you want to really stretch, it's just drawing your knees to your chest and just having a little, um, little hug your knees to the chest. Wonderful. Okay. We're going to go into, um, some people call it dog bird, I like to call it superhero or super mum. So we're going to get on all fours. So on all fours, you want your knees hip width apart and um, you can curl your toes under if you like or you can have them flat. I'd like your hands to be below your shoulders and your hands flat on the mat. And we're just going to start by taking a nice deep inhale here and exhale. Engage your core to that 20 to 30% and engage your pelvic floor. We're going to inhale and on the exhale, we're going to lift your left hand and your opposite leg and stretch them out in front of you. So you can watch me if you're not sure, but inhale. And return. So we're alternating. So this is where this is supposed to be the dog. And this is supposed to be the bird. But I quite like superhero. This is a really, really good exercise for your core and your pelvic floor. One thing that I know I experienced last time, you might experience, well, I had pelvic, well, the midwife said I had pelvic girdle pain um, and the shoulder bridge, and this is very good for pelvic girdle pain. I actually don't think I did have pelvic girdle pain. I felt that um, my baby was trapped on a nerve or pushing against the spine. It felt like a dagger was in my coccyx. But had I done, I didn't do Pilates, I wasn't trained at the time, and I was in so much pain, I didn't want to move, <laughs> I couldn't move. But I'm going to be doing a lot of this, and I'm going to be doing cat-cow, because once my baby moved forward, I was no longer in pain, once my belly sort of popped. So I think she was pressed, or had too much pressure on my spine. So I'm going to use gravity mixed with Pilates to help me try and prevent that pain this time because it was agonizing pain. I couldn't walk up the stairs. I had to crawl up the stairs on all fours. I was, anytime I turned in bed, I was in agonizing pain. I could barely walk, but even sitting was painful if I was in the wrong position. And it was awful, it lasted a month, and then it suddenly disappeared once my belly popped out. And it was around, I think it was around six months so I had a belly, obviously, but it just, I think it just moved forward, my uterus and baby moved forward and took that pressure off the spine. So I'll be doing a lot of this and anything else that will help prevent that because my gosh, you do not want to be in that state. And if you do suffer from any pelvic girdle pain, do let me know because I will design programs, might even do extra sessions. I mean, all of this will help, but I'll do extra sessions because I know, I know what it feels like. I know how awfully you read the web, you know, the website, the internet on pelvic girdle pain and it says slight discomfort. It is not slight discomfort. It's an agonizing pain and it makes you completely immobile. So if there's anything I can do to help you, it would be my pleasure. Last one. Good job. Well done. And the release stretch here, and this takes into child's pose. So toes together, knees apart, chest between the knees, stretch your hands forward and bottom towards heels. Lovely stretch forward here. Brilliant. And we're just going to go to the other side for the other side kick. So bottom hand down, palm facing down, head resting on your upper, uh, sorry, on your, if your upper arm. Stretch your legs out in front of you, stack your hips on top of each other, 
Stack your knees on top of each other and your ankles, supporting hand in front of you here. Take a nice deep inhale and your exhale, simply lift the top leg and float it down. So inhale. Float it back down. And this time we'll continue into our sweep. Inhale. Engage your core to 20 to 30%. Engage your pelvic floor to 20 to 30%. Your movement is with purpose. Your movement's mindful. You're in control. If you're tired or struggling, this isn't comfortable, then please reduce your range of movement, which means lift it to not so high and bring it forward not so far. This is absolutely fantastic if this is more comfortable please do this okay you should not be in pain that's true for any of these exercises you shouldn't be in pain it should it should it's good to challenge you a little bit like I can feel it I can feel this is working my legs I can feel it for mobility in my ankle um, I can feel it so that's good you want to be able to feel it but it should shouldn't be challenging you too much really shouldn't um, because you want to be building strength each week, not you know, suddenly putting your body under too much stress or pressure. You know, I see lots of videos online about pregnant women continuing to lift very heavy weights, pregnant women running very fast, um, pregnant women doing hit classes, and these videos, they're all, the messaging is all, how impressive is this pregnant woman, isn't it amazing? Shouldn't we um, celebrate her? If, if, that, if that person wants to do it, you know, good for you. But I don't believe in promoting that to pregnant women because your body is under so much pressure, so much stress. It is working so hard. You're growing an entire human life inside you in nine months. I mean, that's hardly any time. It is working so hard, it is giving so much and you've got hormones that are changing your body. You know, the hormone relaxin literally helps your bones move um, and your ligaments, and, and that can be painful. It's such a funny name to call it relaxin um, when it's actually can be can cause pain um, or discomfort. So you, know, you really shouldn't be, I don't believe in putting your body under any more stress or any more pressure. So you won't be hearing any of that from me. Last one here. See, I can really feel this now in my hamstring and my bottom, which is great. So we want to do a little release stretch. Lovely. And we're also just going to follow this up with a cat cow. So if you could come onto all fours. I'm facing the other way now. And we're just going to do a little bit of a cat cow. So knees hip width apart, hands under shoulders. And we're going to take a nice inhale here and your exhale come into our cat so rounding that back bringing your head down you can look between your legs inhale and exhale we're going to come into that cow so arch your back raise your head And with your own breath, I'd like you to continue. This is a wonderful stretch that we'll be doing throughout. And this is really good for your back to try and help prevent some of that pelvic girdle pain. And also trying to move your baby off the spine. Last one, the last cat, and then we'll go into a cow. Okay, good job, well done. So those are our exercises. We're just going to do a few um, stretches to close with, and these aren't just a warm down, these are also mobility stretches. They're really part of the program, so 
please don't quit just yet. So if you could sit cross-legged, we're going to start with some spine mobility. So if you bring your hands together in front of your chest, and if you could put your thumb on your collarbone and your middle finger under your, actually no, your index finger under your chin. Take a nice deep inhale here. On your exhale, turn to one side. Inhale, in your own breath, return to center, and then to the other side. You should be sitting nice and tall, nice and tall on your seat bones, golden thread, pulling up out of your head, sitting you nice and tall. Now, if you'd like, you may move your arms into Cossack, so you're holding your forearms, and you're continuing with this wonderful spine mobility. This doesn't feel like much, but it will really help you throughout your pregnancy. It will help with lower back pain. It's very common. You just think about the weight you're carrying. So this will help protect against that. So do join us. And then the final um, couple, if you'd like, you can imagine holding a really big beach ball in front of you. And we're just turning to each side. Last one for each side. Good job. Wonderful. Hands to your knees. We're going to go into mermaid. So if you'd like, you just bring one leg out like this, this foot into the thigh. We're going to take a nice deep inhale. And your exhale over you go, supporting arm, forearm to the mat. Nice big stretch here. I'm going to just extend that stretch a little further. We're just doing one each side, so really just extend that stretch. You can feel a really nice stretch through my core here. And then back over we go. And we're going to switch to the other side. Nice deep inhale. Over we go. Lovely big stretch here. This will just, it will set you up really nicely for the day or if it's the evening, you'll have an even better sleep, which I know is quite rare for pregnant women. <laughs> Nothing worse than when someone says to a pregnant woman, oh, well, appreciate your sleep now or get your sleep in now. Pregnant women notoriously don't sleep very well. Wonderful. We're just going to do a little bit of a leg stretch and then we are going to close. So if I could just take you back down onto your backs, I'd like you to put your ankle and your foot on the opposite knee. I then like you to, to clasp your thigh like this. So under my thigh, and then with the opposite um, elbow, I'm pushing away my opposite knee. This is my favorite stretch. It is so good for your hamstrings and your glutes. It's really nice release, great for your hips. If you were ever a runner, this is fantastic. This is something you should be doing every time after every run. There is a sciatic nerve that goes from your neck all the way down your back, through your bottom, and all the way to your foot. And sometimes people can get that trapped in their bottom if they've been doing um, often running, but it could be weightlifting without stretching it out afterwards. So this is the stretch you need, and it's really nice. And we're just gonna move over to the opposite side. So that ankle just below your knee, that's on your thigh, clasping your thigh with your hands underneath and pushing away that opposite knee or that opposite thigh. Really, really nice, lovely. Really lovely stretch. And as I said, great for the hips as well. Okay, and then the final, final one is our hamstring stretch. So one leg down straight, the other leg up in front of you. Now you may hold your um, leg behind the thigh or behind the calf, but not behind the knee, please. Um, some of you will be really flexible and you'll have your knee on your nose right now and that's fabulous, good for you. I have never been very flexible. I'm just not naturally flexible. Um, I hope to become more flexible and maybe we can become more flexible together throughout these programs. 
Um, but for me, this is a nice stretch. I'm feeling it really nicely here. Now I could straighten up that leg and I could bring, and we're just going to move on to the other leg. So similarly behind you, pull it towards you behind the thigh or behind the calf. And um, this is a really nice stretch for me in my hamstring. Um, but if you do want to straighten up that leg, I, you, I can feel it in sort of different positions. So this is a really challenging stretch for me. I know it doesn't look like it, but it's just, I do have that, that stiffness around these areas. There we go. Right, and we are there. So I'd just like to say thank you so much for joining us. We are gonna close with a manifestation. And this manifestation is, some people will drain you, others will ignite you. Be mindful of who you surround yourself with. And this is so true during this time of our lives. This time of our lives is one of the most wonderful and I feel so grateful, but it's also incredibly challenging. And, and as we go forward, that's going to, both those things will increase. Um, you know, some people drain you. If you've, if you've had them in your life for a while and you've tried to improve the relationship, but they're just draining you, then you really need to start questioning whether they're the best person to have in your life. And those that ignite you, you really want to invest in those relationships and those that energize you and make you feel happy and warm and, and positive and motivated. Those are the people you want to surround yourself with. So thank you so much for joining us. Please leave comments. I'd love to hear how far along you are, um, if this is your first and any questions you may have. Please subscribe because I'd love you to join every week. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.